Okay, so today we are talking through a recent interview that I filmed. I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes and show you guys the breakdown for this specific interview. And yeah, this is just another video showcasing the Fujifilm X-H2S in an interview environment and hope that you would find it helpful. There are timestamps below if you want to refer to specific sections or skip ahead, um, but I wanted to give as much info in this video as possible as I've been getting some DMs and questions recently just how specifically um, I light setups like this. So a little bit of project overview. I'm not going to play the film for you here. You can go watch it on my website if you're interested, but this was a 10 to 15 minute long piece that was primarily just a talking head interview with my friend's parents. And so they were sitting side by side and they are basically telling the story of my friend's birth. He had a really crazy birth story and along with some pictures that they had captured back then, we were going to retell that story. This was a pretty simple project. And so all we really had on set with us was two cameras, lighting, and then no other crew other than me and my brother who was helping me on this one and this was just going to be done at their house in the evening um, so just about a half day shoot okay so getting started with the setup i want to talk about this a little bit more in depth than my previous videos of why i chose to set up the interview where i did and so i do have some notes down here that i'm going to be glancing at if you see me looking down but i just want to make sure i'm not forgetting anything and so yeah when we got into this particular living room. I knew that this was where we were going to shoot because this was their house and it was kind of the most open space in the house. And so I started by turning off all the lights in the room. So any lamps, any overhead fixtures, I turned those off just to get an idea of where the natural light was coming from. And we actually showed up in the late afternoon when it was still bright outside, but I knew that we were going to be filming this after dark. And so I had to choose the setup for this interview carefully so that we weren't going to have to move lights once the lighting changed. And so for this, I knew that I wanted to shoot into one of the corners of the room. Shooting into the corner of the room, if you guys haven't heard anyone talk about this, is just typically ideal because it gives the most amount of depth between your subject and the background. And so yeah, in this particular room, we basically had four corners to choose from. And the one that I picked was simply because it was the most interesting looking shot. And so the corner to the right of this would have been the kitchen. Um, it didn't really make sense for this video to show a kitchen in the background. And so that corner wasn't gonna work. And then the other two corners actually had very large windows. And why this was gonna be an issue was once the sun was completely down, those windows were gonna be black and then reflections would be super hard to deal with. And so we would have had no choice but to, you know, move the lights around and spend a ton of time um, trying to get the reflections just right where our lights or cameras weren't gonna be in the shot. And so I picked this corner mainly because it was the most visually interesting, um, but it also just had the most amount of flexibility when it came to where we could put our lights and we weren't having to deal with any weird reflections. We did land on having my friend's parents sit in stools and the primary reason for this was posture. It's typically easier to sit up a little straighter in a stool um, as well as height. So if we would have sat in normal sized chairs, we would have had way too much of the couch in the shot. And I really wanted you to be able to see their living room because it felt um, very homey and cozy for this style of video and they have a lot of family photos in the background and I just felt like that would complement this piece well rather than just seeing the back of the couch or the coffee table. So once I knew where my friend's parents were going to be sitting we had to set up the cameras and so I set up the Fujifilm X-H2S along with the X-T3. We were shooting on the Sigma Art 18 to 35 and the Sigma Art 24 to 70, and I adapt both of those using the Fringer EFX Pro 2 adapter. And so I've gotten some questions on this in previous videos, but those are my go-to lenses. I shoot almost all my videos with them, and I really like how they pair together in scenarios like this. One angle was this wide shot that has both of them in the frame, and then the other angle was gonna be a little bit tighter 
that I was actually going to have on a tripod where I could pan in between um, each of them because there was going to be different points in the story where one of them was talking and I wanted the focus to primarily be on that individual um, but also gave me flexibility to move back and forth. And so after I got the camera set up we needed to move on to lighting. So yeah at this point all the lights are off. I don't think I have any footage of what it looked like with all the lights off but you guys can just imagine with me all the lights are off in the room and we are going to start with our key light. And so this was going to be frame right. And I did this with a big piece of nine by nine bleached muslin. I just got this at a fabric store. I've used this in previous videos, but this is basically just a huge white sheet that I was gonna diffuse my lights through. And so I set this up on the right and I ended up using actually two lights to um, blast into that sheet. And so I was using the Nanlite 60B as well as the Falcon Eyes RX18 TD. And the reason why I used two lights was with the way their kitchen was set up, there was actually this large pillar that was gonna be splitting the diffusion fabric in half. And so I needed to make sure and get that entire piece of fabric full of light just so that it would be as soft as possible. And so I actually had to place a light on either side. I think I could have definitely just done it with one if the pillar hadn't been there, but these are the challenges that you run into when you're shooting in new locations and not in a studio. After I had this set up, I thought it looked pretty good, um, but I did feel like there was a little bit of a hot spot towards the left side of the frame, and so I did add another piece of diffusion, just the inside of a five-in-one reflector on the left side, um, just to kind of reduce any hot spot um, from the 60B that was being produced. For the hair light, I just had a Quasar T8 tube on a dimmer that I boomed out over the subject. From there, you're gonna see this background texture that was added to the wall. And this was just the Godox SL60W and some barn doors. And so I closed the barn doors just to make it a little bit more of like a slash of light. And I loved this addition to the shot because it just made the background a lot more interesting. I had part of it hitting the left of the fireplace area and then the final part of the streak kind of touched that far wall over by the lamp. And I felt like this just added a lot of interesting texture to the background because before it was just really dark back there because we had no other lights on. And so moving on to the practicals in the shot, the first one was the lamp. And so I actually took out the bulb and put my little Aperture MC set to 3200 Kelvin on the inside. And I think I dimmed it down to about 50%. But yeah, this was just giving a little bit of a warm glow to the background, making it a little bit more interesting. And then the final practicals in this shot were just some lights that were already in the house. And so the first one was this chandelier and the other one was this hallway light. And these actually were both on dimmers, so I was able to bring the intensity of them down slightly, and I didn't have to rig up my own lights there later. And so I felt like after I added these, the shot really felt complete. It was interesting, there was texture in the background, and I was really happy with the look that I was getting. I think what really made this look come together was the color grade as always and so i will show you guys some before and afters but these were color graded with my meadow lutz and film effects giving them their final look and yeah i just really loved how the xh2s matched up with the xt3 and really brought these images to life i did want to touch briefly on what i learned and so I've been trying to add this segment to videos because I don't do everything perfect and I did feel like I made a mistake in this one that I was bummed about. And so I don't know if you guys caught it when you were looking at any of the footage, but the practicals that are in the background, both the chandelier and the hallway light, um, I just had these turned on and I didn't even think about double checking for banding, but there is some really, really subtle banding from these fluorescent lights that slowly move across the frame just in the background. They don't affect the full frame, but it's enough where if you're kind of scrubbing through the video quickly or looking very closely, you can see them. And this was just a shutter speed issue. So I believe I had my shutter speed set to 48. And I believe if I would have changed it to 50, or 60, I can't remember which one specifically, but those would have completely gone away. And yeah, this was just something that I learned, you know, if I'm ever going to use lights like this that are built into a house, I need to make sure and do a flicker test um, just to eliminate that silly mistake. And so yeah, hope you guys would find that helpful if you're walking into a shoot, just remember this, double check your shutter speed and make sure that you're going to get um, no banding. 
All right, and that's all I've got for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was both quick enough where it was interesting, um, but that there was enough information there where you guys could actually learn something and take something away to your next shoot. And so, yeah, let me know down below if you would have done anything differently. I always love to hear, you know, how other people would have shot this particular setup. And so, yeah, let me know. And as well as any questions, if you guys have any questions about anything that I didn't touch on here or specific decisions that I made, please drop them down below. I answer every comment and would love to help you guys out. And so, yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace.